HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Powder donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everyone. Thanks you. Thanks so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by audible.com. We are offering a free trial. If you go to audibletrial.com slash business growth, you can sign up for that trial and then go exploring all of the audio content that is available to you. It is not just audiobooks, though they are fabulous. There's a lot more there for you to enjoy. Over the years, uh, this podcast has gained recognition as a great resource for small business owners, sales professionals, business leaders of all sorts. Uh, we are fortunate to be included on lists of the best podcasts to listen to. And this is because of our guests. Uh, these are people who have expertise in particular areas of business. And they join me uh, for a conversation where they share their expertise with all of you. Today is no different. My guest today is Mike Bursick, community leader and serial entrepreneur by nature. Mike is passionate about helping entrepreneurs live inspired, more connected lives. Via his events and adventure retreats around the world with Wayfinders, Mike helps entrepreneurs find the tribe and the support they need to achieve great things and find personal fulfillment. Thanks so much for joining me today, Mike. Great to be here. Thrilled to have you here. So I, I'd like to start um, with a question about um, what you think are some of the reasons why entrepreneurs' businesses overwhelm them. Mm -hmm. That's a, yeah, great question. Um, you know, I've been, I've, been, I've been an overwhelmed entrepreneur many times in my life. I've coached a lot of overwhelmed entrepreneurs. And uh, there's a few patterns. There's a few patterns that I see that keep coming up, 
And, um, you know, it, it really boils down to just a few reasons. So one of them, uh, a big one, is that our staff, uh, you know, if we have a staff, our staff rely on us to make decisions. So everything gets, everything gets delegated up. And, um, you know, often, <clears throat> excuse me, often that's because we haven't, we haven't really made explicit, uh, you know, what a, a decision-making system that people can use in order to um, make decisions without, without, the, without the boss and, uh, or they don't feel comfortable or whatever. And so it, the decisions, particularly the major ones, always get delegated up to the top. Uh, that's a big one. They were always putting out fires is another big one. So there's issues that come up, problems that are, you know, often they're recurring problems that keep, that keep coming up. And um, those people rely on the, on the boss again to figure out how to deal with those things. Uh, another big one that I see is entrepreneurs are just really good at saying yes. And uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful trait. Uh, and, I, you know, I count myself in that. And, um, you know, I love that I have this, this network of fellow entrepreneurs and friends who just say, you know, I'll come up with crazy ideas and they'll say, they'll dive right in. And that's great. Uh, but in, in the context of a business, it means we're often saying yes to a lot of things. We're not saying no. And every shiny new thing that comes our way becomes part of, you know, what we're working on rather than really being focused. And, um, you know, the other thing that's overwhelming is cash flow issues. And probably there's a lot more businesses these days dealing with cash flow issues uh, than ever. And those are really stressful. And, you know, I've been on that roller coaster many times and uh, just, you know, trying to, trying to get a good night's sleep and you're worried if you're going to make payroll in, in the next couple of weeks or the one yeah. beyond that. Um, that's, that's really hard. And um, so those are, those are some of the big ones that, that I see a lot of. And, um, you know, that's when I, uh, when my last business, which I sold in February of last year, got to that point where all of these things were happening nonstop. Uh, I just said, I have, I have to get off this hamster wheel. And I spent about six months really just implementing, um, you know, bit by bit, just implementing systems, processes that would deal with a lot of this stuff. And, um, and then with my current business, you know, it's run very differently with all of this stuff kind of, um, you know, was, was the starting point for my business. Okay, so, so let's talk about um, that entrepreneurs are really good at saying yes. So, which, you know, can, can be <laughs> a negative thing. So did you figure out how to create a system to keep yourself from doing that? Yeah, it's not, um, it wasn't so much a system as it was just being very, very clear on where the business was heading and mm -hmm. what was important to us. So, you know, I used um, a template from my, from my friend Cameron Harold, who's you know, been a coach, to, it was the CEO at 1-800-GOT-JUNK, built that com company to 100 million plus in revenue and he's coached, you know, hundreds of businesses now. Um, he, he, he developed something called the Vivid Vision and he wrote a book called Vivid Vision, if any of your listeners are interested in going further, but it's, it's pretty simple. It's really just having a very clear idea of where your company is, is heading. Um, and you know, the, the timeline on that can, can differ. I tend to like to focus on three years, uh, one to three years as a, as a timeline and, um, and, and just being really clear about what your business looks like uh, a few years from now. And, um, that can be everything from what are the products that you are, that you are selling, the services, who's on your staff, what is your what does your company feel like and look like, how does it impact its customers, all that kind of stuff. So um, the more you can be clear about that, the easier it is. When you know what you're saying yes to, you, it's a lot easier oh. to know what to say no to. Yeah, right. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, okay. So you also talk about something called an aligned company. Can you explain that, what that is? Yeah, um, so there's a, there's a few things that go into that. Um, so, you know, one of, the big, one of the big things is resilience and, um, mm -hmm. and, and having a company that is able to withstand shocks such as, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm, Pandemic's a bit of a, a unique case because nobody ever saw that coming. Um, having a company that's resilient enough to withstand something like this, that's, that's next level. But I'm talking about just your you know, regular shocks, economic downturns, stuff like that. Uh, so two of the big ones 
for me are just having a healthy balance sheet, money in the bank, uh, having having healthy cash flow and and a, and a profitable company. Um, if you those are sort of the the you know the baseline foundation for being able to have an aligned company because if you don't have those things, you're going to be constantly riding that roller coaster and and um, and stressing out. Uh, another big one is just is having a company that is aligned with your own personal values. So a line company, there's a few there's a few factors that go into it. Uh, for me, one of the one of the big things is the having a resilient company, being able to withstand external shocks to the business and and internal, so that uh, the company isn't fragile and just you know subject to the whims of the marketplace or the world. That it's able to withstand, you know, not all of those. We, we can't. We, it's pretty hard to plan for a pandemic. Um, but you know, the the on a practical level, that looks like a healthy balance sheet with you know enough cash in the bank to get you through ideally six months. Um, that's easier said than done, but it's something that I've helped a lot of businesses work towards. You know, developing what does it look like if we were to just suddenly go without revenue for six months? How much cash do we need in the bank, and how what would be our plan? Um, so that's a big one. Cash flow. Uh, I've seen too many businesses really just focusing on revenue and revenue growth. Mm -hmm. And I count myself among those businesses with my past business, uh, going back to 2013, I raised, I raised money from investors three separate times over the course of three years. Uh, always had quite a lot of money, you know, coming in from those investors. We were growing, I was adding staff. I was adding, you know, tons to our operating expenses. And then after a while, you know, we, and we, it was just this cycle of raising money, running out of money, raising money, running out of money. And I decided I didn't want to be on that, on that hamster wheel anymore. And once I started looking at our business model, realizing, you know, not only was it not profitable, but our, our cash flow, you know, if I projected that out 12, 24 months, it was, it was looking terrible. So that, mm. uh, you know, how, being able to understand your, your balance sheet, your income statement, what your cash flow looks like, those are huge components of, of building a resilient company. Um, the other the other part uh, I look at is you know how aligned is this company with your own personal values? Does this reflect you know what your your desires are, your dreams, your ideals? And um, I've I've seen I've seen too many people start these companies just you know they had an idea and it just kind of ran with it, and then ten years later, fifteen years later, um, it doesn't they they don't really feel very aligned with their work. Uh, either because they've grown and they've changed or because it was never really aligned with what they wanted in the world. They just saw an opportunity and jumped at it. And that's great, but that's, that's hard to sustain over the long run. Um, you know, it, it needs, a business needs to be aligned with what you find important in the world and the impact you want to create in the world. Um, and so those are, those are some of the big ones. And also, um, you know, a company that just feels good to run and you feel happy showing up to work and your employees feel happy uh, showing up to work. And um, a, a, a strong, a strong culture, I guess you would have it. And, and uh, you know, a lot of my, I've been doing a lot of facilitation work as of late, helping to create more connection uh, for other companies in the workplace. And um, you know, it's amazing when you take the time to for people to connect as human beings at work. That the dramatic effect that has on workplace culture, just being able to relate to each other as human beings. And you know, it doesn't take a lot. It just takes a little bit of attention. And say, hey, you know, we're not going to leave our our uh, our personal lives and our and our humanness at the door when we when we go to the office or when we log on to Zoom or whatever, we we bring all of that to the workplace and we can't ignore that. So let's you know let's connect on that level. And it's amazing what happens when when you create that that type of environment. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, the conversations are different. The way you um, interpret uh, things that happen is different. I, I can see that being a huge you know having a huge impact. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, you also talk about dangers of scale, and I'm really curious about this because so many people talk about, you know, the importance of scaling, but, you know, share with us what the dangers of scale are. Yeah, I, I touched on it a little bit, you know, a few minutes ago. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's such a common thing, and it's almost like, it's almost like a fish swimming in water just isn't aware of the water around it. And, and as entrepreneurs, we sort of just accept that the water we swim in is scaling a business. That's what we do. We, we, we grow and we grow and we grow and we grow. And, the, and that's, that's the purpose of an entrepreneur. And um, 
and that's that's the path that I followed for many years with my previous company. We were in, you know, by the time I left the company, we were in 45 different com countries uh, around the world. We had 60 plus staff all over the world. And uh, the more I did that, the, the more precarious the, the company became and the more miserable I became. And I thought that, you know, that might be the path to, uh, to joy or happiness, getting on the cover of Entrepreneur Magazine or something like that. And um, it, it really did not prove to be the case. And, you know, there's so much, so much talk about revenue and revenue growth in the world of entrepreneurship. And if you look at, you know, the big magazines like Inc. and the, you know, Fortune magazines and here in Canada, Profit Magazine, we have these annual, annual awards that we give out for the fastest growing companies. And, you know, I, I, have, I have hundreds of entrepreneurs in my network. I've, I, I have lots of connections to entrepreneurs. And I, I, can, I, I see unequivocally that revenue growth and particularly fast revenue growth doesn't, doesn't always equate with uh, something good and, and, and joyous and wonderful. Often it equate, equates with complete chaos. Uh, you know, if you have a company that's growing 200% a year and we'll, you know, we'll all worship them at the, at the altar of entrepreneurship. But um, some of these companies are they're growing so fast, the owners and the, and the management team don't know how to, you know, don't know how to implement good systems. They don't, they, mm -hmm. workplace culture gets away from them. Um, and the other thing is, you know, typically when you have fast revenue growth, the expenses will, will often outpace that revenue growth. And, um, and I've seen lots of companies just grow themselves out of business. And um, because the expenses are just, are just going, you know, you're hiring people, you're trying to anticipate future growth. So you're hiring more people than you actually need at any given point in time. And um, so I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to jump all over scale. It's not necessarily a bad thing. I just, um, what, I, what, I do, what I do try to get people to be aware of is unquestioned scale. When you just think, okay, that's, you know, that's what I do. We're just going to keep scaling and scaling. And, and with my current business, Wayfinders, I, um, you know, I spend a lot of time mapping out what does my business model look like if I only run two events a year? You know, what do I need to charge? And how many people do I need in order for me to earn a very comfortable living? And from, from, you know, from the very beginning, I just resolved that I would only do two events a year and I would put my heart and soul into them and they, and they earned me a very, very comfortable living. And, and I'm able to provide a ton of value to my customers. And you know, one day, maybe when my kids are a little bit older or something like that, I will, you know, I'll look at scaling that up. But right now, and, and of course, you know, COVID has affected my business, but it's, you know, I was talking about resilience um, mm -hmm. I went into COVID in a, in a very healthy and resilient position uh, and being able to, you know, um, ride this one out. And, you know, at some point I, I may scale the business, but it'll only be because, because I feel that there's a need to scale the business. I want to impact more people, not because I just want to keep scaling for, for the sake of scaling. And, and I think a lot of it comes down to ego. I've seen uh, mm -hmm. a lot of entrepreneurs just I want to scale this I want the I want the recognition and I want the adulation that comes with you know running a big um, company and I, and I feel that sometimes too like I'll get in a room with you know people who are running these 50 100 million dollar companies and they're getting all this recognition and I, and I have this little voice in my head like what are you doing running this you know relatively tiny company and I think geez you know I've really scaled up many other aspects of my life such as the time I can devote to my my family, the the time I can devote to staying healthy, to to having fun, you know, all these other things, and uh, so I just, you know, I, I encourage people to really think about if they if they want to scale their business, and of course you have to scale it to a point where you can earn a earn a living, right? If you're just starting out, mm -hmm. um, you know, you can't rely on one customer a month probably, so you have to scale it up to a certain point. But beyond that, you know, really question is what do I? It really comes down to the question of what do I want from this business. And for me, the, the, the question as of late is, how can I integrate my work with the rest of my life and my family and all these other things um, so that one isn't compromising the other too much? And uh, that's really what I want. And I want to impact people and make a difference in their lives. And you know, if I were running 100 events a year, I wouldn't be able to have anywhere near the same impact I do now. Right, exactly. Um, I'm going to take a quick sponsor break, and then I have some more questions for you. The Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. 
And you probably know that audible.com has thousands of audiobook titles that you can choose from. I mean, I am currently listening to Untamed by Glennon Doyle, uh, but they also have so much more. They have podcasts, Audible Originals, guided meditations, I mean, you, you name it, it is there. So uh, go sign up for the free trial that we're offering. You can go to audibletrial.com slash business growth, uh, get your free trial and explore. You're going to find some really outstanding content. And you know what's cool about it is it's all there on one platform. So you don't have to switch platforms for listening to audiobooks on one platform and you know guided meditations on another one. They're just all right there. I have found it um, tremendously valuable, and I think you will as well. I'm also happy to announce that my new book, Succeed Without Selling, is now available in paperback. If you're a small business owner or a sales professional and you struggle with getting results uh, or the results you're looking for, uh, pick up a copy today. I think you're going to find great value throughout the book. Today, we're speaking with Mike Bursick about the value of putting your business on autopilot. So, Mike. Um, tell me more about this autopilot idea. Um, like what are some of the key components of that and how does someone go about setting that up? Yeah, maybe I'll give you a little bit of context first. Okay. Um, I've talked a little bit about my previous business and how mm -hmm. it ballooned, ballooned into this big complicated thing. Uh, we were running all over the world and, you know, we, we were operated in three different currencies with customers all over the world. And, um, it got to be this big unwieldy beast that was r really just overwhelmingly, overwhelming me. And, um, and I wasn't sleeping well and it was compromising my relationships. And so I knew something I had to change. Um, I didn't think the way the business was at the time would make it particularly sellable. And um, so I thought, because it was such an overwhelming business, right? What, what, you know, what owner would want to take over a business that was completely overwhelming the owner? So I set, up, I, set, I set out to really look at, you know, what are all these things that are overwhelming, overwhelmingly and what can I do about them? And, you know, I, I had been studying different, um, different business books and entrepreneur systems and stuff like that. And, I, and I'd sort of implemented some of these things in, in little bits and pieces, but never really enough to make any sort of meaningful difference. And so I started taking all these different pieces of different systems, developing my own, um, man, you know, modifying some of these things to make them easier to use. Simplicity is one of my big core values. And so, um, you know, maybe developed as a result of that whole experience. So I tried to look at the whole thing through this lens of simplicity. How can we just make this business uh, simpler? And over the course of about six, six to seven months, uh, after implementing all of these systems and processes, I was down to about two and a half hours of meetings on Tuesdays with my with my core team. And that was really the extent of my involvement in the business. And it ran like that for, you know, a, well over a year until until I decided to sell the company. And then, you know, that became kind of its own full time job, uh, preparing the company to sell and all the you know due diligence and finding buyers and whatever. But um, it 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 went from completely overwhelming me to two and a half hours a week of my time. So that, that's sort of the context. Um, I already wow. mentioned I already mentioned the um, the vivid vision and the guiding principles. So that's mm -hmm. that's one that's one key component of this. Having a really strong vision of where you want to take the company, what it's going to look like, who your customers, all all that kind of stuff. The guiding principles. Um, again, you know, other people might call these core values. I call them guiding principles because if they're written well then they help your staff, they guide your staff and they help them understand how this company operates, how I'm supposed to make decisions, you know, what are these lenses through which I, I make decisions. So those guiding principles, they need, to be, um, they need to be written in a way that actually guide behavior, right? And so some companies will have these kind of nice platitudes like honesty and integrity. Um, the, the, you know, the, the way I look at them, they're kind of table stakes, right? You, you, that, that, should, that should be a given. You show up and you, you act honestly and with, and with integrity. And if you have to tell your staff uh, explicitly that that's how they should operate, well, you might need new staff. Yeah. Uh, so with, you know, the, they, the guiding principles really define what kind of company we are and how we operate on the day-to-day -day level. So I'll give, you, I'll give you a couple of examples in my previous company of what that looked like. So one guiding principle was... Um, 
may take risks. So I wanted my company and my staff, I want to always be taking risks because risks to me were the way we push the envelope, we innovate, we, we lead the industry. Um, and if there was a bit more that went into it, you know, I wanted them to mitigate the downside of a risk with some careful planning and, and thinking these things through. But uh, I was constantly reminding them, hey, you know, are we, are we really innovating here? Are we taking risks? So that was one guiding principle. Um, the other was, another big one was make 100 year decisions. So I wanted my staff always to be thinking, you know, what is this decision that I'm going to make today? What is this, what are the ripple effects 100 years down the road? Is this going to create a truly sustainable um, uh, ecosystem for our company, for our staff, for the environments in which we operate, stakeholders, that kind of stuff. So I really wanted to encourage long-term thinking. And the way that played out on a daily level when, you know, when I was having those weekly meetings with my staff, I would ask them, you know, what are the, some of the things you did this week? What, you, what did you work on? What are the decisions you made? And I would always be bringing it back to those guiding principles. And I would tell them, I would give them a little bit of safety and say, listen, if you're making decisions that move us closer to our vision and they're aligned with those guiding principles, then you can't make a mistake. It can turn up, it can turn up poorly, but we're going to learn from that. And I'm never going to, you know, reprimand you for doing things that you think are going to move us in the direction of that vision and they're aligned with their guiding principles. So those are sort of the, the foundational aspects of kind of where you start from. And that really, if you're going to step back from your company, that's a big part in just helping, helping your staff uh, feel comfortable making decisions. That it's not, because often these things are not explicit, right? And it's this kind of opaque thing to our staff and they don't know, well, what is, well, what is the boss going to think of this? Um, so that, that's a big one. Another one that's that was really, I talked a little bit earlier about, you know, putting out fires, how that's a big uh, source of stress for, for yes. business owners. There's always some kind of issue coming up and especially if they're recurring issues, they happen over and over. We just get super frustrated. And the, and the problem in most contexts, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're a busy, overwhelmed entrepreneur and this problem comes up, the temptation is just slap a bandaid on it and, and move on. And, you know, and the other, the other issue with that is often our staff will bring these things to us, uh, you know, as they happen and we're expected to deal with them in the moment. So we might be working on something important, but now we got to, now we have to drop that immediately and help this person deal with this issue. Um, so one of the things I did was develop this issues list and an issues meeting. So uh, if a problem came up in the company and as long as it wasn't, you know, a critical problem that was going to, you know, really negatively affect the company. Let's say your, you know, your credit card system goes down, you can't process credit cards anymore. That's probably an issue you want to deal with on the spot. So most issues don't fall in that category. They're just annoying, nagging things. And so that would get put into our issues list. It was just a Google sheet where people um, could park these things. And then we had a time, we had an hour set aside every week where we as the, the core team would meet and we would discuss these issues uh, and then we would really try and get at what is the actual root cause of this thing. And that's where we found, you've probably heard of something called the five whys process, where you try and really dig into the mm -hmm. root cause of things. And we would go down that five whys process. And sometimes, you know, a couple of whys or three whys would be enough. Sometimes we'd have to go really deep um, to find out what, what is the actual thing that we need to solve, not just this surface level thing. And then once we've kind of arrived at what the root cause is, we discuss a solution and then we come up with a to-do plan for, for implementing that solution. And then that gets assigned to somebody, they become accountable for it. And then at our next issues meeting, you know, they'll update how they've addressed that thing. And so what, what that does um, over time is it really solves issues for good. And so we had, we had by the time I left the company, sold the company, uh, you know, we'd been using the issues list for maybe a year and a half. Uh, we had over a hundred issues that were in the solved section of that sheet. You know, we had a issues, new issues, in progress solutions, and solved issues. And there was a, over a hundred of them that had been moved to that bottom of the list. And these were things, you know, at least ninety-five percent of the time, they never came up again because they were properly dealt with and solved. And I can't, you know, I can't uh, over, I can't overestimate the the value of that to a business owner and to a company being able to deal with issues once and for all it's it's such a, it has such a dramatic effect because those things they just suck your energy and they frustrate you and um so getting rid of them so th those are you know those are some big things um another one is just having a system for taking that 
long-term vision and 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 um, chunking it out into, you know, we would we would take that long-term vision. We would look at what are the things we're going to work at this year that are going to move us towards that long-term vision. What are the big projects and what are the metrics that we have to focus on, and then where where the rubber really hit the road was at the, the quarterly level. So we would take time, about half a day every quarter, to really dig into like what are the what are the projects that we have to move on that are going to hit those one-year targets, that long-term vision, who's responsible for what, we would properly map that out. And then finally, that would get mapped out into these two-week sprints. So every other week, we'd have a meeting. This is what I'm working on. This is what uh, this person is working on. What do I need in order to move this project forward, that kind of stuff. And so it would just get you know, broken down into these little chunks. And then that would, you know, people would filter that out into their own, how their own day looks, moving these things forward. But you know, being able to break that down into, into meaningful chunks. Because if you have this you know, massive goal, like we want to expand to 45 countries, um, that's kind of overwhelming. And you need to, you need to bring that down to what am, I, what am I doing over the next two weeks? And what am I doing today in order to um, achieve that goal? And that's not necessarily you know, a great example because that ultimately proved to be a little bit meaningless, but to me at least personally, but. <laughs> well, I think it's, I mean, I love this idea of chunking things down into smaller bits because I think that is absolutely how we get things done and and don't um, get so overwhelmed with. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe if I can tack onto that one final thing. Sure. Um, I, I I used to get, um, you know, I was uh, I was and am still really big into systems and having you know having systems for everything. Mm -hmm. And we used to I developed this spreadsheet where everybody would have their day broken up into these half hour chunks. And I would ask them at the beginning of the day or the end of the previous day, map out what your day looks like. And, you know, of course, most people have just regular ongoing tasks, like a customer service person, you know, responding to emails, phone calls, that kind of stuff. But I wanted to make sure people had time also carved out in that schedule for, you know, projects and, and things that are going to move us forward. So their, their little daily daily calendar broken up into half hour chunks would then populate this other spreadsheet and I could see what everybody was working on every given day and and you know and hind, and and they went along with it in some some cases enthusiastically some cases begrudgingly um, <laughs> but you know in hindsight it's like wow that's a really intense level of micromanagement and um, and so what I encourage uh, people to do these days is that it's just pick one to three uh, you know, what are one to three important things that you need to work on today in order to move these projects forward and move the company towards this long-term vision and just map those out and, you know, try and work on those first thing before you get into the regular, and that's not always feasible, right? But before you get into the regular grind of work. And if you as an owner know what your staff, you know, what are those one to three things they're working on each day, then you can, you know, we would have a weekly, uh, <coughs> sorry, a daily huddle seven to 10 minutes and people would talk about, this is what I'm working on. And you as an owner can then keep guiding people like, hey, is this thing that you're working on moving us towards our vision or is it not? Sometimes people would get off track and you know, right. they'd get distracted by the squirrel that's going by and I would just gently bring them back. Uh, so that, you know, that I think is more effective than this. What, yeah. what are you doing this particular half hour, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so much better than micromanaging. So um, if, if you had to pick one thing to share with the listeners that they could implement today that would help them reduce stress and potentially working hours, what do you think that one thing would be? Um, well, I mean, the thing that I've seen have the most impact, mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, my, my, my temptation is, is to just cheat and choose like this big umbrella kind of thing, which is like <laughs> <laughs> focus focus on developing a financially resilient company. But that's like that's a huge project, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, because you can have all these. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll just cheat a little bit and say, you know, really, really that that process is just really becoming financially savvy enough to be able to understand your balance sheet, to be able to understand your income statement, to be able to put together a six or 12 month cash flow or whatever is relevant to your business uh, because you can have all that you know you can have all these other fires and people coming to you to make decisions or whatever um, that that can be stressful but that is amplified a million times when you're also worried about 
making payroll or how you're going uh -huh. to pay a supplier, whatever. And so, you know, the number one thing you can do um, as a business owner is really understanding your, your business model. Because when I started digging into my business model, and I, and I mentioned, you know, I'd, I'd raised quite a lot of money from investors. And so I had, you know, had their money in the, in the account all the time. I didn't have to think about the business model so much. But once I decided to get off that hamster wheel and look at the business model, it's like, oh, wow, this thing really isn't working. You know, our margins are really low. Our operating expenses are crazy high. Um, getting fiscally literate is, is so important for any entrepreneur, even if you're, even if you're starting out. And just being able to understand your business business model, because the you know most people look at it. If if we're not profitable and we have cash flow issues, we're just gonna we're just gonna grow. We need more revenue. Um, that more often than not does not succeed, because if you have if you have a business model that doesn't work, throwing more revenue into it is probably yeah. not going to fix fix the problem, right? If your mar if your growth margins are too low, um, you can double your sales, but if the that, that you'll probably need more staff and you'll have more operating expenses and whatnot. So you really need to understand the business model. And there's so many resources out there for, you know, if you don't know how to look at a balance sheet or an income statement, if you don't know how to put together a 12 month cash flow. And, and the cash flow is, is probably the biggest of all of those, right? If you can sit, I just did my, I, I do my cash flow at the beginning of the month, uh, every, every month, looking at 12 months. Yesterday being Sunday, I didn't do it. So I did it today. And, you know, my business looks great, even if I don't make another sale for the next 12 yeah. to 12 months or so. Um, so that makes me feel really good. Uh, and it helps me sleep and, yeah. and not stress out. And I'm, able, and I'm able to bring just more calm and clarity and presence to my business decisions, rather than if you're constantly worried about money, then you, you're going to make a lot of decisions from a, a basis of fear and panic rather right. than calm. And then you also tend to make more short-term decisions, right? Because yeah. you're like, oh my God, we need money. What are we, what are we going to do right now? But, you know, you might take on an opportunity that brings in some short-term money, but it totally not aligned with where you want to go as a company. And that, that's okay sometimes, but if you're constantly doing that, um, it's not a good recipe for long-term uh, success. So dive into that business model, understand it, understand what you can do to address it, you know, increase prices, lower your operating expenses, whatever. So. Yeah, boy, I think that is a huge point because it really is the foundation of then all of the other decisions you make and can keep you from making ones that don't serve your business. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, well, Mike, can I, I, can really, I, can I, yeah. can, can, can I, can I add one more bonus? Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, the 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 other thing that I didn't touch on yet, which is which is really helpful, is just having a regular meeting rhythm. Um, you know, if you have staff, uh, for for us, and, and that can change, but it generally means having some sort of daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly rhythm to when you're meeting. So it's not just it's not just willy nilly. You know, here here's something we need to discuss. Let's 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 have a meeting in, in 10 minutes or something like that. Um, oh, yeah. Because if you have a good meeting rhythm, then the important stuff gets discussed. So uh, what our meeting rhythm looked like was daily huddle, 10 minutes. And that was, that was seven to 10 minutes. And it was really simple. It was the core team is this is what I'm working on. Um, this is, these are some of the roadblocks I might be experiencing towards getting these things done. And, and these are some, you know, resources or support I might need. So that was just the weekly huddle going around the circle. Uh, sorry, the daily. Uh, the weekly huddle was, you know, <clears throat> um, what are we, what are we hearing from our customers and our staff? So because I was the head of a, you know, fairly large company, I didn't always, I didn't really have a lot of um, contact with my customers or with a lot of my staff. So I wanted to hear from the, the team, you know, what are our customers saying? What are our staff saying? Um, so getting, you know, and then other people would benefit from that as well. Uh, looking at the company metrics and then looking at everybody's role-based metrics, you know, were they hitting their targets, stuff like that. And then talking about those issues, as I discussed before, uh, the monthly one was just a financial meeting with my bookkeeper and sometimes my accountant looking at the numbers from the previous month. And then the quarterly one, which I mentioned earlier, was just mapping out, here's what we're going to work on this quarter to move us closer to revision and also reporting on the previous uh, quarter, you know, did I achieve what I set out to do? So that's, that's, that's pretty important. And, and 
you know, that means getting it in the calendar and making sure everybody has it sitting in their calendar. You know, 10 o'clock is our daily huddle. Tuesday is at two o'clock is our weekly huddle, whatever. Make sure that's in the calendar. And then you can cut down on so many other, you know, ad hoc meetings. Oh, and the final one is just one-on-one -on -one time for the owner to just have one-on-one -on -one time with their, with their key staff. Um, and I tried to make sure that those were a mix of, mix of business and just connecting on a human level, uh, which is so important. Uh, that's, thank you for the bonus. I think that is, is great and, and just really great. Um, I love this idea about having scheduled meetings because you're right, it gets rid of all of that constant interruption throughout the day thinking, you know, I need an answer right now when most of the time, no, you don't, you know, it, it's, and it gets people taking ownership and responsibility for things. If they know they're, it's okay for them to go solve that problem. They don't have to bring it to you. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That is great. Uh, well, I, I really, I, I so appreciate this. Will you tell the listeners, you know, how they can find you and what you've got going on, please? Yeah, my, my company is called Wayfinders, and the URL is way, w-a-y-finders.com. Um, if you click on the blog there, I post to the blog fairly regularly. I've got a whole, you know, a whole bunch of articles about all of this stuff that we've discussed and how to implement it. There's a lot of free tools. Um, I don't, you know, I, I'm, I don't really do a lot of consulting, and I'm not really interested in taking on more consulting clients. So I just kind of put this stuff out there for free so that people can use it and and take advantage of it. And I've seen it help so many people. So that's a good starting point. Um, and if you have any questions about anything, you just click the contact uh, button on the website. Terrific. Thank you. And listeners, thank you. You are who we are doing this for. I'd also like to thank our sponsor. Get your free trial of audible.com and explore the audiobooks and programs that are available to you by going to audibletrial.com slash business growth. And head over to your favorite bookstore to pick up a copy of Succeed Without Selling. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. We are Jackie Clayton and Katie Van Horn, co-hosts of the Inclusive AF Podcast. We're two diversity, equity, and inclusion peeps who love both what we have in common and what makes us different. During the day, we use our superpowers to block bias and break down systems that are inequitable within companies and create inclusive AF places to work. We're also BFFs who have tough conversations about our different lived experience. Come have a listen and learn something new.